Hey guys, good evening everybody and once again welcome to the video. This video I will be talking about Elasticsearch. How to estimate how many data nodes do I need for my cluster, right? So I'll be showing you how to estimate that and essentially how to uh, generate cost projections for that. So uh, beginners, this might be a good video for you, okay? So uh, there's a simple formula that essentially explains how many, uh, how much uh, data nodes do you need for your elk. So first you need to calculate the total data in gigabytes, which is essentially how much raw data do you get every single day multiply that by the number of days that data needs to be uh, retained and number of replicas plus one. So for example, replicas will always help you to achieve a better read throughput, right? And also prevents in scenarios of shard failures. Uh, then you calculate the total storage. Total storage is your total data in GB. Multiply that by one plus 0.5 disk watermark threshold plus 0.1. And then your total data node becomes total uh, data storage divided by memory that you have per data node. How much RAM do you have? Divided by further memory to uh, data uh, memory to data ratio. Uh, what is memory to data ratio is essentially a number uh, which is ideally between 24 to 30, and uh, and depends again if it's a warm 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 if you want to keep the data warm you you choose a higher number right. Uh, let's take an example for a small sizing cluster, right? Assuming you receive a, a 1 GB data every single day and you want to retain this data for about um, 9 months. So 9 times 30 days times 2 because you need a 2 replicas, that's about 540 gigabytes of data. So your total storage will be 540 multiplied by 1 plus 0.15 plus 0.1 which will come out to be 675 gigabytes. How many data nodes do you need? So you take the total uh, the size, that is 675 gigabytes, versus how much RAM do you have? I For, for this computer, let's say I only have 8 GB, GB of RAM. And then I multiply that, uh, sorry, I divide that by uh, number 30, which gives me three data nodes. Now, to do a cost calculation, you come to AWS cost, cost calculator. So I need three data nodes and now, you need about 8 GB of RAM. So now from the search bar, you can either select C type or C type instances, which are compute um, optimized instances, right? So I'm gonna select about, uh, let's see, I have 8 GB RAM here. I can select a C5 with a four CPU code and eight GB of RAM, um, right? So compute optimized pricing model, you can either select reserved or on demand so this will be costing you about $549 uh, every single month, or roughly around $500, right? Now, here is your master node, right? So you have your data node where your data is saved, right? Once you issue a query, the query goes to your master node, then uh, your data is aggregated or, you know, essentially uh, aggregated and then essentially uh, given to your master and then your master essentially returns the data to the client. So I'm selecting three master nodes. Ideally, it's a good to have at least three master nodes. I'm selecting T2 medium. Uh, you at least want to have 8 GB or 16 GB of RAM. Uh, so let's select a minimum of, uh, let's say we want at least a 16, uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM here. Uh, this will cost me about $900, uh, roughly $1,000. Uh, but I would at least, uh, rec uh, you know, advise to have at least more than one master nodes, right? So. Now coming to the size, how much I need. I need about a one terabyte of data, right? So I would plug all this number in and I'm looking for $1,300 to spend every single month. So now you, when you do your cost estimation, uh, so, uh, sorry for that. So now what you wanna do is you wanna take roughly 1,400, not sure what's happening to my calculator though. Uh, and then I can say multiply by 12. So roughly I'll be looking at, uh, you know, What's happening to my calculator? I, I, I don't know, why, why is my calculator? Looks like, yeah, I just have to say standard, okay. So uh, 1400, I'll, I'll multiply this by roughly 12. Some roughly the company's looking to spend around $16,000 for the this instance, right? And remember, if they have multiple environment, QA, UAT and stay uh, prod, you're looking 16, 16, 16. Uh, so that is, uh, so if you have two environments, QA and prod, so 16, uh, so you're looking at this times two. So you are looking around 
$35,000 to spend every single year because you'll have two um, environments, right? So now let's take a look at a bigger uh, use case, right? This is something like PayPal who gets 100 GB of data every single day. That's about massive amount of data, right? So the requirements here are following. We are, we are receiving 100 GB of data every single day. Uh, this is again uh, for you to understand how to calculate these, right? They wanna keep this data for 30 days, okay? Uh, they have given that they, they can use a maximum of 64 GB of RAM. So now you're, you, you put these numbers, right? So 100 GB times 30 times two replicas, that's 6,000 GB, 6,000 GB. Total storage, you will be, uh, again, you put this into formula, that's gonna give you 7,500 gigabytes. Total number of data nodes is five. Now, if you look into cost projection, right? Because you when you do all this, you wanna tell your company, hey, you're gonna looking for this much amount. So five data nodes, you're looking for 60 GB, a RAM on each, 36 uh, core, right? Uh, it's a CPU uh, uh, instance type. It's a compute optimized type, right? I'm looking about to spend around $8,500 just for my data nodes. <laughs> for master nodes, I'm selecting again, um, I, we can go for at least a, 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 30, a 30, 16 GB RAM. So we are looking to spend about $900 here for, we are looking about 20 terabytes. Uh, how much was we had? Uh, roughly 600 GB, how, how much is that? So we'll do 6,000. I think that's how much, 60 or something like that. Yeah, six terabytes, sorry, six terabytes, right. So and you can put this number six terabytes here and then you come to the math. So now you wanna say to the company, hey guys, for this amount, you're looking at around $10,300 monthly, which means the company would be looking at around, uh, ah, that's a lot of money. <laughs> Yeah, Elasticsearch won't come cheap, right? So that's looking, the company is looking to spend around $120,000 just for the Elasticsearch stack in one environment. So if you have two environments, that's around $240,000 that company is looking to spend, right? Right, so depending upon the use cases, these numbers grow, right? Uh, but as an elk engineer, I highly recommend you to, you know, optimize these mappings and, and stuff, right? For example, let's take a look at this. So for example, if you don't use particular fields, I highly encourage you to put index as false, right? Because when you do that, versus if you don't provide that, Elasticsearch will by default put everything as keyword. So for 500 documents here, I'm looking at 1.6 megabytes versus 4.8 megabytes. Now you'll say, yeah, what's the big deal, man? Okay, multiply this number by 50 million documents. That's 480 GB versus 160 GB times replicas. That's nearly a terabyte, and with if you optimize the mapping, you are looking at 320 gigabytes with replicas. That's a massive uh, difference, right? Uh, you know, massive optimization, right? This can save you a lot of cost, right? So that's that. And then other things that I want to talk. Uh, let me share my screen. How can you increase your ingestion throughput, right? PayPal has essentially on their, um, you know, a lot of YouTube videos they have, you know, given talks on Elk. They have said. Instead of providing uh, a document ID, you can let Elasticsearch assign a random document ID. With this, you, they, as, they essentially increase their uh, throughput by two million documents per minute just by doing these small tweaks, right? That's other thing that you wanna do. For faster speed, you wanna have uh, node and shard level caching. You wanna have um, refresh interval set to negative one or you wanna set to a large number so that uh, you can ingest much more document. You can increase the buffer size, the input buffer. So all these stuff will essentially help you to optimize, have better ingestion throughput, uh, reduce cost, right? And control all these things, right? I hope this video was use useful and you did find some valuable insight in this video. If you have any questions, list your question in the comments and I'll try my best to uh, get back to your questions. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.